This video is going to look at calculating the average rate of change. And the first example that we have here says we want to find the average rate of change from x1 to x2. So we're given the function f of x equals 2x plus 6, uh, x1 equals 0, and x2 equals 3. So we want to figure out what is the average rate of change from this point x1 equals 0 to x2 equals 3. So to start off, let's go ahead and graph our function. And I'm going to go ahead and use the calculator to do that. So if we go to y equals, then we're simply going to type in uh, 2x plus 6. 2x plus 6. And I'm going to go to uh, zoom standard. And I'm going to adjust my screen here a little bit because I realize that when I plug in 3 for x, if I plug 3 in, we're going to get 6, and 6 plus 6 is going to give us 12. So I want to adjust my window, uh, particularly for the y-axis here. I want my y-max to go up to 15. Okay. So if I copy this over, then we'll have our graph here for us. So here's our graph. And what we're trying to calculate is we want to find the average rate of change from x1. So if we evaluate f of 0, then we plug 0 in. So that's 2 times 0 plus uh, 6 is 6. And we look at f of 3, we plug 3 in, we get 2 times 3 is 6, plus 6 is 12. So we have the point 0, 6. So at 0, we're up here at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then when x is 3, y is 12. So 1, 2, 3, we're up here at 12. So what we're trying to find is what is the average rate of change between these two points. So we're going uh, here from 0, 6 to 3, 12. Well, what is this average rate of change? Well, essentially what we're finding is the slope. We want to know then what is the change over here to here. So really all we're looking at is when we're looking at this average rate of change, essentially we're calculating the slope. So if we plug into our formula, here we have x1, y1, x2, y2. So we would have 12 minus 6 over 3 minus 0. So we have 6 over 3, which is equal to 2. So our average rate of change is 2. Now, of course, if you were smart about this we go back and look our equation we know is a straight line we said before that if we're finding the slope or the average rate of change for a straight line it's always going to be the same no matter what two points we pick and here we have the equation in y equals mx plus b so our y-intercept is 6 and of course mx the slope here we could easily identify as 2 so that would be our rate of change. So that's pretty easy with a straight line because that means that for every time we go 1 to the right, we're going up 2. Okay, so that's our rate of change. So in other words, you can think every time we go up 2, we're going over 1. So up 2, over 1, up 2, over 1. So that's our rate of change. Now, how is this going to be a little bit different if we look at the following function, f of x equals x squared minus 2x plus 8. So let's look at the graph of this particular function. So if we go into y equals, we'll clear out our function and type in x squared minus 2x plus 8. And I'm going to start with, let's see, I don't want to, well, we'll go to zoom standard. All right, and we have a parabola here that's at the very top, so I'm going to adjust my window a little bit. We don't need all this uh, negative x values on the x-axis because our graph is up here uh, on the positive y. So if I go to the window, I'm going to leave the 
x from negative 10 to 10, but I want to adjust the y minimum to maybe, we could probably just make that 0, and then our y max, uh, let's make that maybe about, uh, let's say, well, let's go a little bit bigger. Let's try 25 and see if that works. So then if we look at the graph, we get a little bit better representation of our parabola. So let's copy this over to our notes. So now we have basically the same problem that we were presented with before, but notice now we're looking for this average rate of change, but now we're not given a straight line. So we want to know what's going to happen as we go from x1 equals 1 to x2 equals 5. So we want to know what happens as we go from 1 to 5. So let's go ahead and figure this out. If we were to plug in f of 1, then we're going to end up with 1 squared. Okay, so that's 1 minus 2 times 1. So 1 minus 2 is a negative 1. Negative 1 plus 8 would be 7. Okay, and then we want to find f of 5. So if we plug 5 in, you get 5 squared is 25 minus 10 plus 8. <clears throat> and then we're going to end up with 23. So if we look at this a little bit better, that means we have x is 1, y is 7. When x is 5, y is 23. So when x is 1 here, we're up at 7. And when x is 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. we're up here at 23. So here we're at x is 1, we're at 7. So now we want to find what is the average rate of change from x1 to x2. Well, we would draw a line connecting the two points and we essentially want to find the slope of this line. And this here is called a secant line. And that means we're looking at this line that crosses through those two points. We want to find the slope of this line, or again, this is called the average rate of change. So, for example, this could be representing uh, maybe the speed or something of some particle, or maybe you're driving down the car at one second, you start to increase your speed. Then we want to know what's happening. <clears throat> well, we want to know what is the average rate of change from, let's say, x is 1 to x is 5. So this could be representing possibly time. So we're simply going to find the slope, which again would be we have our x1, y1, x2, y2. So we would have 23 minus 7 over 5 minus 1. So we would end up with, if you work this out, you're going to end up with an answer of 4. So this is the average rate of change. And what that tells us, as our y changes 4, our x is changing 1 at a rate of 1. So you can think if we're going up 4 over 1, or you can think as we go to the right 1, we're going up 4. All right, now we have another example. And here, we're going to kind of apply what we just talked about. The problem says we have our position equation. And here, you're going to think of the letter S here is going to represent position. So here, S is representing the location or the position is equal to a negative 16 T squared plus V sub 0. This is just V sub 0 times T plus S sub 0. All right, we want to write a function that represents the situation and find the average rate of change of the function from x1 to x2. So let me go back here and explain this position function. S is telling us the location uh, of our position. And here t is representing the time, how much time has passed. And this little v sub 0 
this little sub zero says that's your starting or initial point. So this would be our initial V is velocity. So what is the initial velocity? And then S sub zero, well S we said is position. So what do you think S sub zero is? Well, S sub zero, again, that would be your initial position. So in other words, that's kind of your starting uh, starting point. Now, that's kind of the statement. We, they want us to come up with a function that represents the given situation below, and we also want to find the average rate of change from x1 to x2. And I guess really here for our example, this is actually going to be from t1 to t2. So if we look at our example, it says we want to find an object is thrown upward from a height of six and a half feet at a velocity of 72 feet per second. So first of all, we need to come up with an equation. And first, let's kind of draw a sketch here. Uh, basically what this is telling us is we have an object thrown up from a height of six and a half feet. So let's say this is our representing our six and a half feet. And then our object is going to be thrown upwards at a velocity now since this is it's our initial velocity so this would be our v sub zero which is 72 feet per second okay so we know the height six and a half feet and we're going to throw this object at a velocity of 72 feet per second so that's the initial velocity as the object is thrown from our hand. So if we plug this into this position formula, we have s equals a negative 16 t squared plus v sub 0. Well, v sub 0 is our initial velocity over here, so that would be 72 t plus s sub 0. That's the initial position. Well, our initial position here would be the initial height, which is six and a half feet. So all we did was plug in the initial velocity and the initial position to get negative 16t squared plus 72t plus 6.5. Now they want us to find this average rate of change from t1 to t2. Well, here is our t1 is zero, t2 is four. So now we're basically going to set this up just like we did this previous example, finding this average rate of change. So to do that, let's go ahead and look at the graph of this particular equation. So let's see, we have a negative 16t squared plus 72t plus 6.5. So we can go to our calculator, y equals, clear out, and we have a negative 16 and I'm just going to use x here, that's fine, negative 16x squared plus 72x plus 6.5. And if I go to zoom and number 6 is standard, <clears throat> looks like all we have here is a straight line. Uh, this isn't a very good representation, so we're going to have to go in to adjust our window. And to help with that, we can look at the size of our numbers, or again, if you go into the table, second function in graph, and type in a value for x. Well, if x is 0, y is 6.5. If x is 2, notice we went from 0 to 2. We have, or now y is 86.5. And let's see, we were looking at going from 0 to 4. So what happens if we go all the way up to, let's pick 5. <clears throat> we get a negative 33.5 and what happens if we do plug in a 4 and let's see at 4 we get 38.5 and if we go even higher let's see what happens if we plug in a 10 we get negative 873 so that'll give you an idea of how you need to adjust your window
So let's see, how about if we go from negative 10 to 10 and let's make our, well, if we look at our table, when X was two or X is four, X is two went all the way up to 86. So it looks like we need to go at least to 86. So let's maybe go to uh, 100. So let's make our Y max 100 and that looks like a pretty good representation here of our graph and maybe we might want to uh, let's see adjust our x-axis here a little bit so if I go to window how about if we just go to a negative 5 see if that helps a little bit And maybe let's see if we adjust. I think that'll do for us. So let's go ahead and copy this. All right, so here we have our graph. And we want to then calculate the average rate of change from T1 zero which is four so if we look at our function then what happens if we plug in zero so at time one if we plug zero in it should be pretty obvious and we could go to the calculator again if we go to our table we said if at zero we get 6.5 and then at t2 when x is four we typed in a 4, we ended up with 38.5. So at 0, we're at 6.5. So I'm just going to guess it's somewhere right in here. And then we're looking at, at 4, we're at 38.5. So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's right about here. And what we're trying to find is the average rate of change or the slope of this line. So we would have our x1, y1, x2, y2. So if we want to find this average rate of change, which is simply our slope, we would take 38.5 minus 6.5 over 4 minus 0. And if you perform the calculations here, you're going to end up with 8. And our units here are feet per second. So we're looking at 8 feet per second. So that's our rate of change. And more specifically, I'm sorry, that's the average rate of change. Okay. Keyword is, is average rate of change from this point to this point because we know that as we move along there's different rates of change along this graph because this graph opposed to our first graph we looked at here we had a straight line the average rate of change is constant it's always going to be the same but when we have this parabola graph as we move along here we're always having a different rate of change and for some of you if you go on to eventually take calculus this is a problem that you're going to see in calculus where here we're calculating this average rate of change and later on if you take calculus we're going to figure out how we can actually figure out the exact rate of change at this particular point so for example if this was this object here of the ball we throw up and down from time zero to time four the average rate of change is eight feet per second well maybe we want to know what is the exact rate of change at a particular point on this path well until you take calculus we're not able to calculate that so for right now we're going to be calculating this average rate of change now we could add another part of this is what is the equation okay now remember this here is our secant line it goes through the two points here what is the equation of this secant line so let's say we wanted to find the equation well, how do we find the equation of a line? Well, remember, we need to know a point and we need to know the slope. Well, 
we have a point. We have two points, actually. Well, one point is 0 and 6.5. And this is a specific point. This is our y-intercept because x is 0. That's where it crosses the y-axis. And we just calculated the rate of change, or the slope, to be equal to 8. So if we use y equals mx plus b, then we have y equals 8x plus 6.5. So here we actually found the equation of this line. Now let's see if we can verify that by going to our calculator. And if we go into y equals, I'm going to drop down to y2 and type in 8x plus 6.5. And now I'm going to hit graph and notice it's going to draw the secant line. And that's pretty close to what we estimated here from before. So let's see if I copy this over here. And that is pretty close to what we came up with from above, our secant line that goes through here. So this has given us that graph for our secant line. So hopefully now you're able to find this average rate of change. And again, for those of you that are lucky enough to go on to take calculus, you will be able to eventually find the exact rate of change at any particular point along this graph. Because notice with this curve, your rate of change is always changing. Here it's kind of increasing, then it starts to decrease over here. So for right now, we're just going to be looking at calculating the average rate of change by looking at the slope here of this secant line.